Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator. So in this session, I will be discussing a very important topic in the connective tissue diseases that is adult stills disease. Now, how do you define and what exactly is this adult stills disease? So this particular stills disease, it is a systemic form of juvenile chronic arthritis. Right, it is a systemic form of juvenile chronic arthritis. That is what is your Stills disease. And in these patients, along with the chronic arthritis, there will be also presence of the high spiking fever. Right, along with that, there is also high grade fever or high spiking fever and this particular high spiking fever is much more prominent especially out the, at the outset than compared to that of the arthritis. So fever right it is much more prominent than compared to that of the arthritis and in as the name itself tells you it is adult stills disease but this particular syndrome occurs very rarely in adults right as such it occurs only in adults. But it is a very rare entity and if you take the exact age group they are seen around 20 or 30s of age right most adults they are in their 20s or 30s and occasionally the onset right occasionally the onset can be seen even beyond after 60 years but that is a very rare event or rare phenomenon. So that is about your the basic introduction to the Stills disease. And if you observe the clinical features, I have said you two important points. One is fever and the other one is arthritis. So fever that too I said you it is a high spiking fever. So fever right the temperature is around 40 degrees centigrade right the daily spikes up to 40 degrees centigrade. And along with fever, there can be also presence of chills and as well as rigors. Right, along with fever, it is associated with chills and as well as rigors. And let me tell you, this particular fever, it will return back to normal or it will return back to several degrees below the normal even in the absence of the antipyretics. So that is why I use this word dramatic. Right, the fever is dramatic. Often you will have a daily spikes even up to 40 degrees. And that particular fever is associated with chills and as well as rigors. And it will immediately plunk back to normal or several degrees below normal even in the absence of the antipyretics. That is why I am using the word the fever is dramatic. And these patients they also complain of sore throat. Right, so where the individual will have discomfort within the throat. And coming to the rash, rash it is very characteristic in patients with the adult still disease. And if you see the description of the rash, it is an evanescent salmon colored non pruritic rash. Right, it is evanescent. non pruritic salmon colored rash that is what you will have the rash in the adult stills disease now where is this particular rash distributed this particular rash it is distributed over the chest and as well as the abdomen Right, this rash it is distributed over the chest and as well as the abdomen and this rash it can easily be missed since it often appears only with the fever spike right so this particular rash it is associated with right it is often associated with the fever spike and that is the reason why it can easily be missed right so that is about the description of rash in patients with the adult stills disease. And what are the other features in adult stills disease? 
many patients they also have lymphadenopathy and pericardial effusion right they also have lymphadenopathy and pericardial effusion so these are the other features that you will have in this adult still disease and if you take the joint symptoms right that is the arthritis right so this particular joint symptoms they are mild or absent right they are mild or absent in the beginning right they are mild or absent in the beginning but a destructive arthritis especially of the wrist may develop several months later right so after several months right there can be development of destructive arthritis right but this particular destructive arthritis usually seen within the wrist right usually seen within the wrist that will develop several months later so these are the other features that you will have in patients with the adults disease so very important feature is the fever right and along with the fever there can be appearance of rash and other features include lymphadenopathy and pericardial effusion and next thing is the joint involvement that will be in the form of arthritis and if you see investigations in these patients with the adults disease these individuals they will have anemia right there will be also leukocytosis right there will be also leukocytosis and the white cells the normal value everyone is aware that is around 4 to 11000 per microliter but in these patients with the adults stills disease the white blood count sometimes exceeds right it exceeds more than 40000 per microliter right it exceeds more than 40000 per microliter and that is the rule and if you take the serum ferritin levels they are often strikingly elevated right even serum ferritin level it is strikingly elevated so it can go up to more than 3000 milligrams per ml okay so that is what is the serum ferritin level in the adult still disease now other conditions if you see like uh, viral infections malignancy multiple blood transfusion even in this conditions also there will be extreme elevation in the ferritin levels so this extreme elevation of the ferritin levels this can also be observed in the viral infections right it can also be observed in malignancy right and it can also be observed in multiple blood transfusions right it can also be observed in multiple blood transfusions so that is about the investigations in these patients with the adults disease and if you take if you see the character of the fever in adult still disease the character of the fever or the pattern of the fever right i should tell you without missing this the character of the fever we call it as quotidian fever right the pattern of the fever we call it as the quotidian fever so now what do you understand by this word the quotidian fever so quotidian fever pattern is that where you have recurrent paroxysms every day right you have the recurrent paroxysms or recurrent spikes every day right so that is what you understand by this word the quotidian fever and i have already said you there can be sore throat and there can be the classical rash as well and i have also discussed the description of the rash now after having discussed about how to diagnose the adult still disease let me take up the discussion of the treatment in these patients with the adult still disease see 
about half of the patients they respond to the NSAIDs. Right, half of the patients they respond to non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs, and the remaining half, right, the remaining half they require prednisolone. Right, the remaining half they require prednisolone. Okay, and you know sometimes they require the dosage of prednisolone greater than 60 milligrams per day orally. Right, the dosage of prednisolone is more than 60 milligrams per day orally. Right, and apart from these two group of drugs, we have other group of drugs that is interleukin-1 and as well as the interleukin-6 inhibitors. So, if you take the interleukin-1 inhibitors, the examples they include, number one, anakinra, And another example of interleukin-1 inhibitor is kenakinumab. Right, so these are the examples of the interleukin-1 inhibitors. Whereas, we have also interleukin-6 inhibitors. And the examples of this interleukin-6 inhibitors, they include tocilizumab. Right, tocilizumab. So, this tocilizumab and as well as anakinra, they can be effective for patients with refractory disease. So, in those individuals who are not responding to your NSAIDs or not responding to your prednisolone, we give this interleukin-1 or interleukin-6 inhibitors. And the course of the adult disease, it can be monophasic, intermittent or it can be even chronic. That is what is the treatment of your adult disease, adult still disease. Then, what are the complications that can be encountered in patients with the adult still disease? See, we have a very important complication called as macrophage activation syndrome. Right, macrophage activation syndrome. So, this macrophage activation syndrome, it is a life-threatening complication of adult still disease. Right, it is a life-threatening complication of the adult still disease. Now, what will be the manifestation of the macrophage activation syndrome? The clinical manifestations include, number one, the development of fever, then splenomegaly and as well as the cytopenias. Right, so these are the manifestations of macrophage activation syndrome. And apart from that, there can be even dyslipidemias as well. So there can be increase in triglycerides, that is hypertriglyceridemia, or if you take the fibrinogen levels, there can be hypo. Fibrinogenemia. Right, there can be hypofibrinogenemia. And apart from that, in these patients with the macrophage activation syndrome, there is marked elevation of the serum ferritin as well. So, this is the complication that can be encountered in patients with the adult still disease. Right. Now, so this completes the discussion of the adult still disease. So, if you take this adult still disease, it is also or, or it is a disorder which is characterized by juvenile chronic arthritis. And along with this juvenile chronic arthritis, these patients also have the high spiking fever. And this high spiking fever is much more prominent than compared to that of the arthritis. And it is seen in adults of age group around 20 to 30s. And it is a rare entity and more than 60s also there can be onset but that is still very rare. So the clinical feature will be the dramatic fever. Why am I using this word dramatic fever? Even though it's a high spiking fever associated with chills and rigors, the fever will come back to normal or even it goes below the normal value in the absence of antipyretics. 
and along with fever the another important symptom that can be seen is sore throat next is the development of rash right it is an evanescent salmon colored non pruritic rash and this particular rash is present over the chest and as well as the abdomen and this particular rash most of the times it is missed why because it often appears only with the fever spikes the other features include the development of the lymphadenopathy and as well as the pericardial effusion and the joint manifestations are mainly in the form of the arthritis and specifically within the wrist joint and this particular destructive arthritis it may develop even months later as well and investigations if you see there will be anemia and leukocytosis right where the wbc count will be up to 40000 per microliter and serum ferritin levels are also elevated and there are many other clinical conditions where the serum ferritin levels can be elevated that includes viral infection malignancy and multiple blood transfusion so these are all the conditions where there will be extreme elevation of the serum ferritin levels next and if you see the treatment mainly nsaids half of the patients they will respond and prednisolone half of the patients they respond and even with nsaids and prednisolone if the individual is not responding then you need to give interleukin 1 inhibitors anakinra and kenakinumab and then interleukin 6 inhibitor that is tocilizumab so in refractory cases you need to give these particular drugs and if you see the complications of this particular adult disease the very important complication is macrophage activation syndrome right so this completes the discussion of this very important topic that is adult stills disease thank you very much